Hi, my name's Chad Saratoon. I'm at Burton Waters, a 15-acre unique marina development adjacent to the Fosdyke Navigation Channel, two miles from the city of Lincoln. Today I'll be presenting a session on Natasha's Law. Natasha's Law changed things in that important allergen information now needs to be provided on pre packed for direct sale products. Previously, the information didn't need to be on a label. The information only had to be provided verbally or via a notice. In 2016, Natasha tragically died from a severe allergic reaction to sesame that was baked into the bread of a sandwich that she bought. At the time, there was no legal requirement for the label to show the allergens. Natasha's law came into force on the 1st of October 2021, so we're coming up to almost a year since the law came into force. But unfortunately, this law has been missed by many traders, and it's really important that these allergen labels are on our pre for direct sale food. pre for direct sale food is food that's packaged at the same place it's offered for sale and is in the packaging before it's ordered or selected by the customer. It includes foods that consumers select themselves from a counter, like a pre sandwich made in the premises or even sold at a mobile or temporary store. Any food that's not in packaging or packaged after it's been ordered by the consumer isn't considered pre for direct sale. This would be considered non pre food so the labelling requirements are slightly different. Food packed by one business and supplied to another is generally considered as pre-packed food and they have full labelling requirements. Examples of pre-packed for direct sale food include sandwiches or bakery products which are packed on site and then the consumer selects or orders them, fast food packed before it's ordered, so if it's held in a, in a warmer that would be considered pre-packed for direct sale, pre-packed pizzas, pre-packed salads or even in the butchers burgers and sausages that have been pre-packed by the butcher, ready for sale for your barbecue. It could also include samples of cookies given to consumers when they're packed on site, food provided in schools or care homes or hospitals or other similar settings. They'll also require labelling. So on the label, the first thing you'll need to add is the name of the food. The name of the food can be the legal name, it can be a customary name or it can be a descriptive name. You'll then need an ingredients list and the ingredients list needs to be provided in descending order of weight. And it's very important that this list is provided at the mixing bowl stage. You'll also need to emphasize the allergens. Now this means that anytime you use an ingredient that is an allergen or contains an allergen or is even derived from an allergen, the actual allergen must be emphasized in the list. On screen are the 14 legally recognized allergens. And it's very important that you use the word that's used in the legislation. Some of the most common allergens are probably cereals and milk, but often things like mustard and sesame are missed. Mustard, particularly, and celery could be found in spice mixes. Sulfur dioxide is often found in things like wine or jams. It's also very important to distinguish between peanuts and tree nuts, and this is a mistake many people make. Peanuts and tree nuts are separate allergens, and one person who's allergic to peanuts may not necessarily be allergic to tree nuts. In this example label, you can see the name of the food, cheese and pickle sandwich. This has also been broken down into a description. Within the ingredients list, you can see the various ingredients in the product. Where you have an ingredient that contains an allergen, you can see that the allergen has been included in bold typeface. So for example, wholemeal bread has been broken down with wholemeal wheat, where wheat has been included in bold. So that's the end of the session. I hope you found it helpful and informative.